and pass down the embrace the video and if you don't know yet amendment to the wine regulations basically says there's one with well, this one regulation they've added that says where there's a possibility of things moving both ways like on ev charge where you're charging from grid on battery systems and maybe on solar that you shall use rcds that are bi-directional and i think if it says shall or this they shall be used I'm pretty sure that if you go on an ERCR and find one that's not bi-directional, you've got to change it. And that might mean changing the entire board if that particular manufacturer does not sell one yet. And pass down the... Just going to do a bit of actual amendment content. In computing, there's a law called Moore's Law that states that every two years, computer power doubles. And I think we've seen that for a long, long time. But as far as I'm aware, and I'm not mad into computer technology, I think that's, uh, but it's integrated. I think that's um, it's calmed down a bit. I don't think it doubles every two years. Maybe it does, but we're certainly in an area now where computers last a lot longer than they did because they just got the power off the bat. I know, for example, the two main computers I've got that I edit on, um, HD video on that, are both like coming up to about seven years old, maybe a little bit older. I bought when I was last self-employed, so they could easily be seven years old. And they're happily chugging away doing the thing. I've chucked a few upgrades in and that, but they're happily plodding along doing editing. So I don't see the need to go and buy a new one. Same with phones. Everyone used to always have a new phone every year. New phone every year when your contract come out, you go and get a new phone because there's so many new features in that, so many new things to go and buy that you had one because it just made sense because they were moving so fast and they'd have colour screens or whatever, whatever came along. When iPhones came along, I think they used to try and release a new one about every year and you'd go and get it because it was so feature-packed it made your life easier. But certainly in the last couple of years, we've seen them even out and now the features that they're ramming in there are ever smaller increments of improvement. So, uh, certainly the last couple of iPhones I've had, I've kept them for about two to three years, basically till the battery's full because it does what I want it to do. Same with the one I've got now, I'm recording this on. I bought this one because it got a better front-facing camera so I could do more of this shit for you, but generally, I make it last three to four, uh, two to three years until the battery got starts to go shit up, because it works, and that's that's what I want it to do. It does what I want it to do, and sits there doing it. Now, in all instances, this is great news for the consumer. This is great news for the purchaser because I basically don't need to go out and spunk loads of money every year on a new iPhone because the one I've got does the job. I'm not living on the fucking edge of technology and it does everything i need to do record this video i screenshot it i do what i do with it same with computer now whilst that's great for consumers it is not fantastic for the sellers of iphones and indeed if you google it you'll see the sales of smartphones have dropped as they become more market saturated one the people that want the phones have got them they go and buy them then because they last longer they keep them for longer or those second hand phones have a reasonable second-hand value and filter down so everyone can have a reasonable phone. It is not good news for manufacturers because it means that they sell less phones. Now, it feels like in circuit protection from all manufacturers, for years and years and years, they sold as MCBs and fuses and stuff like that, and we'd stick them into boards and put them in people's house and that. And that was pretty much it. It was good for, I would say, at least 10 years. Now... We're getting all sorts thrown as it seems like, I can't, when they brought out FDDs, I was like, what the fuck are they gonna come up with next to sell us more shit? So we had our MCBs, then we had type A RCDs, which were safer, made a big improvement, don't get me wrong, they were made stuff loads safer, yeah? Then we started getting all these funky F uh, RCDs for different jobs, then we got AFDDs, and now what they, I was like, when AFDDs come out, I go, well, what are they gonna sell us next? These protect the person, they protect the property, they protect from fire, they protect from killing people, what the fuck are they going to possibly sell us next? What new bullshit could they come out with that's going to sell us it? Some, what scientific gubbins are they going to come up with? Well, we've got an answer in the form of a new Amendment 3 to the regulations. The new cash car for them to milk is bi-directional RCDs. Now, what I'm not saying is, I'm not saying they're not useful. I'm not saying they don't have the place. I'm not saying that at the design stage, People should look at what they have and look at manufacturing instructions and pick the appropriate device because I completely believe in all that, yeah? You should always select and erect the correct protected device to afford the level of protection that you require on installation to protect people, property, and livestock, and then even now against fire. But 
What you normally do is you make those devices available and people select them based on all those things I just mentioned because they're available. So all the manufacturers make them, everyone follows the same thing and you select them, yeah? What we haven't had before is manufacturers trade organisations demanding regs that insist that we absolutely must use them. Stop me if I'm wrong, tell me, message me, put me in the comments, whatever, but it seems like now that rather than just making a device available that improves safety of an electric installation, that's not good enough now. One of the reasons for that is because there's those so many slap dash fucking gobshite screw fix sparks that they just go and buy the cheapest split load board anyway fit it. Only yesterday I saw a post where someone had had a split load board fitted that's obviously come from screw fix by a wannabe sparker. So if you're not employing proper people, proper designers that are doing the proper job, they're going to buy the cheapest board available. Now, the manufacturers are still selling split load boards because they make money out of it because shit ass screw fix sparks sell them. So they've only got themselves to blame when people aren't buying their latest products, their Bidrex and OCBs, because the kind of person that fits a split load board does not have a fucking clue about where to select and erect and install a bi-directional RCD. Now, for some reason, the manufacturers have gone, well, you know what we'll do to combat all this fucking slapdash board installs that we're not having and we're not getting these RCD sales? We'll all club together in Beamer, our trade organisation, and we'll demand a change to the regs that says you've got to use bi-directional RCDs. We'll completely remove the need for any kind of design or thought about it by the sparker, and we'll incorporate a regulation that's pretty much basically a law, let's face it, where you've got to use them, and if you don't use them, you'll be severely punished. Not that you will be severely punished, because there's no one actually punishing anyone for using the wrong shit, because the trade regulations and organisations don't give a fuck, but we'll just get it in the regs anyway, so that all the people that do the job properly are absolutely forced to use these RCDs, and we'll chuck the word shell in there, so that when people are retrofitting stuff, or doing ERCRs, they have to retrospectively replace RCBOs and RCDs that we've sold them, that they've fit for years, in to make it better for us, so we can shift more units. That's what it feels like to me. Now again, fear one, I'm not saying these devices aren't required. Maybe bi-directional required, maybe bi-directional RCDs are absolutely required for batteries and storage systems. Now, we've got a reg that says, you need to follow manufacturer's instructions already. There's a reg that clearly states, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Now, if the manufacturer says, use a, a bi-directional RCD or don't, is that gonna trump this regulation they wanna put in? It seems like this regulation's been brought in by the salesman of Bidrex and RCDs to make us buy them and fit them. It also seems like a good way of shitting on all the little manufacturers that are about that don't have Bidrex and RCDs or haven't got them yet so that you can't, um, you can't buy them or use them. So yeah, I'm a bit of a myth on this one because it just feels like it's just a sales pitch and they're using our regulations to sell more of their shit which I think is what's going off. Now, if you were a Beamer who support all the manufacturers of protective devices and you're forcing a, an amendment through in the regulations because it's absolutely urgently required because everyone's moaning about bi-directional RCDs, aren't they? The only people I've seen moaning about bi-directional RCDs are the fucking manufacturers of bi-directional RCDs. I literally have not seen hardly anyone even speaking about bi-directional RCDs except for the people that make them. Seems odd, that. Now, while we're doing this amendment, we ought to chuck in a load of other stuff people are moaning about. Well, I'll tell you what I've seen people moan about. I've seen people moaning and looking for guidance and clarification on the use of external fuse board equipment, external enclosures for protective devices. So you think, oh, while they're at it, Beamer, all their people that are in their group are making this stuff. Let's fucking set the record straight on that. No, no, we don't want to do that. And they've not done that, have they? Now, the manufacturers of batteries, there's been a big hoo-ha about putting batteries in lost for a long time or putting them under staircases or putting them on exit routes, yeah? So you think, I oh, you know what? All the manufacturers will get together and they'll clarify this. Of course they fucking didn't. They don't give a fuck where you put your batteries as long as you buy them. So BSI had to come along and put out guidance, just guidance, not you shall, just a bit of guidance saying, don't put them in lofts. Immediately, Every battery manufacturer is throwing the toys out the pram like some miserable little cunt because they're like going, oh no, we won't shift as many units now because if you've got a house where the only place you can put the batteries in the loft, they'd rather sell you a battery you put in your loft, which is probably dangerous, than not sell you one at all. And it seems like they're the same gig with this. So yeah, they're not getting together when it suits them to make things safer. They're getting together when it suits them to sell units. So now, even though 
I've seen loads of different people from loads of different sectors moaning about fitting protected devices outside of Jason to the meter box. Beamer, who run the club that make all this shit that they put next to them, have gone, yeah, you know what's really important right now? Bi-directional RCDs, because they're really expensive, we get a good margin on them. But they're no way going to bring in or look at or even think about or even mention the concept of fitting protective switch gear outside because if they did that, they might not sell as many fucking outdoor fuse boards. So yeah, if you're gonna come along and do an amendment that's gonna cost me a new book, administration time, learning time, CPD time, why don't you fucking address all the problems that are being thought about in the industry rather than just the ones that suit you to shift RCBOs? So yeah, it's pick and mix. Choose what you want when you wanna shout about something safety-wise. What you should remember is, the vast majority of manufacturers making safety devices, shouting about how safe their device are and all that bollocks, they're going, we're safe, we brought this out, it's going to make people safer. They don't actually give a shit about things being safer. They care about shifting units. They do try and fill gaps in the market and provide things to make things safer, but their actual give a fuckometer on whether you die outside your house flicking on a fuse board isn't a matter. Does a bi-directional RCD protect a child who's fucking around with an outdoor fuse board any more than a normal RCD. Does it fucking bollocks? But no. What all the action installation sparkers are shouting about is ignored, but what the manufacturers want to sell more of is absolutely in the regs, because they're all in bed, j Beamer, IET. Yeah, so they're all in bed with each other, they've moaned enough and they've got them to rush out a rush version of the document and then they've not even put the fucking document online yet because they've fucking fucked up the internet and they've got the fucking document wrong. So they've rushed it out. They've reduced the draft for public comment period to 12 weeks. They've put shun in there. So you've absolutely got to do it and retrospectively apply it as far as I can see if you don't want to be in grey water. Just because they've all clubbed together while simultaneously ignoring all the other problems that people mentioned about protective devices while they all simultaneously bring out outdoor fuse boards so they can sell them to octopus so they can undercut us. Maybe I'm a cynic. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not saying that the devices are less safe or aren't required. I'm just saying, how come you're ramming it down my throat? You know what I mean? Tell me if I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Am I reading too much into it? Am I too conspiracy this? But that's what it seems like to me. Seems like the manufacturers need some gimmick to flog us to shift their numbers. And what are they going to come up with next? What protected device will they come up with next to do that? And if you don't know yet, Amendment 3 of the Wine Regulations basically says, there's one, well, there's one regulation they've added that says where there's a possibility of things moving both ways, like on EV charge, where you're charging from grid, on battery systems and maybe on solar, that you shall use RCDs that are bi-directional. And I think if it says shall, or this, they shall be used, I'm pretty sure that if you go on an ERCR and find one that's not bi-directional, you've got to change it. And that might mean changing the entire board if that particular manufacturer does not sell one yet. I'll put the wording here if it's on YouTube, and I'll try and put it in Instagram in a bit because it's not out, but I'll put the link up in a story in a minute. But yeah, they want it changing, so you shall, which obviously we know in the regs means you absolutely must. So as far as I'm aware, it's not retrospective like everyone's got to go and change them now, but if you find it on an ERCR, you will have to swap that device out. And just to finish it off, yeah, if I designed something, I'd probably use them. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they're bad, but what I am saying is, we have a reg that says, follow manufacturer's instructions, which they could incorporate. We have regulations about selection and erection that already say, you should factor in things that are associated with that installation to make it safer, and you should select and erect it to make the whole installation work as a one yeah? That's fine. Someone like a proper designer who knows the stuff, who knows what they're doing, would be able to recognize that as an issue and pick a bi-directional RCD without having a reg that absolutely demands it. We can't start absolutely demanding every single thing, otherwise the regs are gonna get massive, there'll be amendment every fucking four weeks. We need to have designers that are competent, experienced, qualified, and read the instructions and know what they're doing so they can select and erect in a proper manner without everything being written down. And make no mistake about it, yeah? They want it in the regs so they sell more units. So you've got to do it. It's not a safety thing. They want it in the regs so they sell more units. That's why it says shall. You must. Shall means you must. Whereas when the regulations for batteries come out, they say, oh, oh 
Try not to fit them in lofts. Try not to fit them in lofts. They didn't say you show us. Oh, just try. Just try not to fit them in a loft. Just say don't fucking fit it in a loft. It's a fucking ridiculous concept. But people are still doing it, going, oh, well, it doesn't say you can't. So how come you can have a fucking half-ton battery in your fucking loft that could fall through during a fire? But, oh, you want to make sure you ain't got an RCB, RCD that's not bi-directional? I suspect they're also getting a lot of returns because they're being misused and misfitted by people who don't know what they're doing. And by having that reg, they'll be able to blame the purchaser and not have to do a full refund and fuck around returns. I think that's also at play as well. But maybe I'm just a sinister motherfucker, who knows? I've cast my net far and wide today. I spoke to sparkies, people in the industry, manufacturers of various types and wholesalers and all sorts, yeah? First of all, let's get one thing straight. From now on, you are a failed sparky unless you refer to bi-directional RCBOs as double-enders, double-ended RCBOs. If you don't say double-ended RCBOs, you're a dickhead. So all bi-directional RCBOs now will now be referred to as double-enders, like your mum likes, oh yeah. Now, I've not genuinely asked Sega this question, it's a joke, yeah, but the word on the street, allegedly the rumours I heard from my industry insiders on my web that I have, is that Hager got rid of the five times RCD test for RCDs because theirs couldn't meet the requirement. And this is what they said, allegedly joke. Hager, was it you that removed the requirement for five times RCD tests? because your devices couldn't meet the requirements of BS7671 as it stood. Do you remember the camera? Wasn't me. Wasn't me. And then, allegedly, this was a joke and I asked him, I said to Hager, have you been ringing up people, yourself and your reps for weeks, banging on about how you've got a bi-directional RCD coming out for months and weeks and weeks before this, then suddenly, Art drops a reg, that you've got to use double-ended RCDs for everything. This is their reply. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. It's almost like Hager walking their dog, which is Beamer. Then it's almost like Beamer walking their dog, which is the IET. It's almost like a manufacturer's asked their trade organisation to go to the IET and say, bring out a rule because we brought out this out of this dog shit range of FDDs that everyone's ripping the piss off so they don't work. We then fucking told everyone not to do the five times test because our RCBOs and RCDs can't comply with it so we just got rid of it. And now we've got a bi-directional RCB we need to flog and you're going to help us by making a dog shit rule up. And we will chuck people out of Beamer, which apparently has happened allegedly, who don't want to comply. Dun, dun, dun! The regulations have recognised for two years about prosumers about forwards and backwards currents flowing both ways through protected devices. But only now, two years later, have you decided you're going to bring out a device that can actually function properly during those instances that someone in j put in the regs two fucking years ago. And we're meant to be happy about that. It basically means for the past two years, you've been fucking us over because those devices weren't available. So your range has been dog shit for the majority of persona installations. But you're tiny are like you're basically coming and sucking us off just because you met the requirements of the new modern marketplace. Like you tried to with your bullshit FDDs and the fact you need to connect to a fucking server to update them if they don't work. Honest to fucking God, Eager. You used to be a decent firm, but you're really, really dog shit now, aren't you? <laughs> fucking bollocks. Also, fuck it, you know what I mean, honestly. One last thing as well, yeah? Hager are going all over you and it's a favour. Like, they're not just a manufacturer to bring out products that meet the requirements of the marketplace. They're going, hey, guess what we've got? We've got an RCD that works both ways, it's a double ender. So fucking what? It's, a, it's required. The only reason you're bringing one out is because your existing ones burn out when you pump voltage through them the one way and don't work properly. You're not doing me a favour modifying your designs to work properly with a common occurrence in houses that is PV, EV and batteries. You're just bringing it out because what you've got is not functioning correctly, it's breaking and burning out. It's like selling me a car and saying that only goes forwards and saying, guess what we brought out? We brought out a new car and it goes backwards as well. Well, what do you fucking do? The fact that you think innovation is doing things your devices should already do is bullshit. They should work both directions because prosumers been in the regs for fucking two years. Ugh! I'm passed down the... 
embrace the video.